Hi, welcome back to uh, Videos from the Ville. This is Professor Greenwald, and this is Government uh, 112, State and Local Government. This is um, our second uh, installment uh, in the uh, looking at the first set of PowerPoints that I sent you. Uh, what we want to do today is look at the types of political systems. Uh, as I ended the earlier um, lecture uh, with was the note that uh, when our founding fathers came to the shores of uh, North America, uh, that they brought with them political systems that they were accustomed to uh, in Europe. Um, and uh, they established these systems in our new uh, state and local governments that they uh, created as they um, established themselves in the new world. Well, what were the what are the different political systems that we have to choose from in the world today? Uh, simply, some of you know this. It's old hat. I apologize for the uh, uh, review, but there's some of you who perhaps didn't have as good a secondary. Um, education in government and political science and I want to make sure everybody's on a level playing field. So what are the types of political systems? Well first would be monarchy. It's one that we tend to think of many instances first. What is monarchy? It's just the rule by family lineage. Um, of course monarchy is based on originally the divine right of kings. Uh, that providence has chosen someone or some family uh, to uh, be the trustee of a certain area of the earth uh, for him. And um, this family is invested with the divine right of kings uh, that uh, the Lord has chosen uh, him or her or them uh, to rule this part of the world. Um, so the divine right of kings simply says that monarchs derive their authority from God. Uh, now, what we find when we look at monarchy, when we look for examples, uh, we tend to frequently think of England first, don't we? Well, actually today we'd have to talk about the United Kingdom, not England. England is a part of the United Kingdom. And England isn't a pure monarchy today. You find, of course, the United Kingdom um, is actually what is called today a constitutional monarchy. Uh, it is a hybrid um, type of government. It is a mixture of uh, democracy and of monarchy. And um, it's, uh, of course, uh, you have the parliament and uh, you have uh, the uh, monarchy as well. So you have a constitutional, um, a constitutional uh, monarchy. Uh, so if we look for uh, pure monarchies today where whatever the king or queen uh, says goes, uh, you find there are far fewer than uh, was true in uh, earlier centuries. We have to go to Saudi Arabia, perhaps, uh, to the House of Saud. We have to go to Jordan um, to find another pure monarchy, although they have a, a, a constitutional assembly now. Uh, we could go to Morocco um, to look at uh, or to find uh, pure monarchies where whatever the monarch says goes. But we find many uh, monarchies today are uh, constitutional monarchies. We find that uh, most of Western Europe is just that. You have not only the United Kingdom, but you have Norway, Sweden, Denmark, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, um, you go uh, over to Spain, uh, and then you have the microstates of Monaco and uh, Liechtenstein, for example, are um, all examples of um, constitutional monarchies. Okay, so we have monarchy being one type of political system. A second type uh, would be dictatorship, or what we call authoritarianism. Uh, dictatorship is normally thought of just as uh, 
a strong man rule, and that strong man is usually a military leader. Um, you find that uh, doesn't have to be, but generally is. Uh, what are some examples of dictatorships? Um, you find that one of the uh, uh, classic cases in the um, picture in your power points is uh, Muammar Gaddafi, the former dictator of uh, Libya, of course. He and a group of um, junior military leaders um, uh, revolted. Um, they had a coup and threw out the uh, former king uh, in the uh, early 1950s, and they established a, um, a, a dictatorship. And eventually, uh, Gaddafi rose to the top and uh, became the uh, unquestioned leader of that country until several years ago when he was uh, murdered by his own people. But uh, dictatorship or authoritarianism, um, you find that uh, most of Africa could be characterized as uh, having uh, governments that are dictatorships, and there are a good number in Asia as well, uh, and some in South America. Uh, that was particularly true uh, up until the Reagan administration, and you see a flowering of democracy in South America. Uh, we can talk about that uh, later, be happy to. Uh, the third type of political system could be an oligarchy. Of course, an oligarchy is nothing more than government by the few. Now we find that most oligarchies, again, are hybrid government systems. They're mixtures of different things. But government by the few, those few could be a military few, they could be an economic few, they could be social few, um, they could be a military few, but oligarchy is simply government of the few. Um, okay, the next type of political system would be an anarchy. Of course, it's uh, perhaps not a system at all, but anarchy is the absence of political order. We find that this was one of the major concerns of um, Thomas Hobbes, the great uh, British political theorist. Thomas Hobbes wrote, of course, the, um, the uh, important and significant work, The Leviathan. Leviathan was written to justify a strong and dynamic uh, king or monarch. And uh, in The Leviathan, Hobbes says that the, um, the most um, important job of government is to simply establish law and order. If you do not have law and order, you do not have um, that, then uh, government can't do anything else in society without uh, a state of um, relative harmony among the, the citizens of that state. But um, in Leviathan, Hobbes calls anarchy a state of nature. When we have anarchy, you have a situation where man's existence is nasty, brutish, and short. One of the most famous um, quotations, uh, one of the first most famous characterizations in political science. A state of nature is one in which man's existence is nasty, brutish, and short. Where have we seen anarchy? Well, we've seen anarchy uh, in some briefly in some um, American cities, the cities this, past, um, this past summer. Uh, you've seen uh, anarchy uh, uh, briefly on the streets of Portland, on the streets of Seattle, on the streets of Chicago and New York, for example, just some examples. But anarchy, for example, we saw in Los Angeles after the trial of Rodney King um, anarchy prevailed in the city for many, many hours. We find we've seen anarchy um, in uh, Somalia, uh, in the Lebanon, uh, in uh, the Balkans after uh, Tito died. Uh, and you have uh, uh, the, uh, the dismantling of Yugoslavia. Okay, let's go on to the next system. Theocracy. What is theocracy? Theocracy is nothing more than a form of government in which God is recognized as the ruler. 
Uh, one of the best examples of this would be, for example, Vatican City. Vatican, in fact, was given its sovereignty by Benito Mussolini. Benito Mussolini in 1929 granted the Vatican uh, sovereignty. So theocracy um, is, again, a form of government in which God is recognized as the ruler. When you go to Vatican City, for example, they have all the trappings of a sovereign state. Uh, they have their own police force, the Swiss Guard. They have their own postal system. Uh, they have their own diplomatic corps, um, and there are uh, papal uh, con consulates uh, throughout the world. Uh, they have their own, uh, not only their own postal system, but they have their own shortwave radio system to communicate with the world. Uh, so, a theocracy. Um, then we have totalitarianism. Totalitarianism is one of the most difficult systems to define. Uh, some people might say it's authoritarianism on steroids, um, but it's uh, perhaps a bit more um, than that. Um, in totalitarianism, we have a situation where we have uh, the complete subservience of the individuals to the state. The complete subservience of the individual to the state. And the one person who was very good in defining, well, two people very good in writing about totalitarianism. First, we have Hannah Arendt, Hannah Arendt, A-R-E-N-D-T. She wrote a great book uh, in the middle portion of the 20th century called On Totalitarianism. And that's well worth um, a read and well worth adding to your personal library. But another uh, great uh, theorist on totalitarianism, and he's still with us, is Zbigniew Brzezinski. Zbigniew Brzezinski was um, a rival, if you will, of Henry Kissinger. Kissinger was at Harvard. Uh, Brzezinski was at Columbia. Uh, Kissinger went into the Nixon and Ford administrations, uh, starting out as National Security Affairs Advisor and then going to Secretary of State's position. Uh, Brzezinski went into the Jimmy Carter administration as National Security Affairs Advisor, uh, but uh, never got to be Secretary of State. Some of you may know his, uh, remember his daughter, Mia Brzezinski. She is the one who uh, uh, was on Good Morning Joe, I guess, on MSNBC. Um, she uh, locally is very famous because she, uh, with her former husband, uh, she uh, uh, I was working uh, in New York City, and her and her former husband didn't believe that New York City was a, a good place to raise children. So they worked in New York City um, Monday morning until Friday afternoon, and they would pack up and they would come to Lidditz, and they lived in Lidditz. They thought that uh, America's smallest, cool city was a good place to raise their children, and you could see Mia and her husband uh, around town. Um, along, of course, for a while with Lady Gaga, who was even down at Jack's Bar for uh, uh, a few times. At any rate, Zbigniew Brzezinski uh, wrote a great book on totalitarianism in the uh, mid-1950s, and in it he set forth six characteristics for totalitarianism that help us understand what totalitarianism is. I want you actually to eventually memorize all six characteristics so you recognize totalitarianism and know it for what it is. Um, of course, you've read along the way Animal Farm, uh, which you should recognize as a totalitarian system where the pig rises up to become the dictator in a totalitarian state. Uh, and we have other... Um, works of fiction that are trying to depict a totalitarian dystopia, whether it be um, 1984, A Brave New World. But uh, what's the first characteristic of totalitarianism? Zbigniew Brzezinski uh, tells us it's an official ideology, an official ideology. Now, um, for example, when we think of totalitarianism, and we'll talk about this in a minute, there is both rightist totalitarianism, which is what we refer to as fascism, and leftist totalitarianism, which we refer to as communism, mistakenly refer to it as communism. It's not. 
communism, but it's just leftist totalitarianism. But in shorthand, we refer to it as communism. Uh, but we have uh, an official ideology. Well, who are, what are two of the best examples of totalitarian regimes in the 20th century? Well, it would be the uh, Germany under Adolf Hitler and his Nazi regime. Uh, Nazi stands for what? National Socialism. So the official ideology of the Nazis in Germany, the Third Reich, during the 20th century was National Socialism. Uh, and you find that um, they would be a example of totalitarianism from the right. Example of totalitarianism from the left, of course, would have to be Joseph Stalin.